Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you go about numbering your pages once you have compiled all your portfolio pieces into one document. Now here I have all my portfolio pieces in one document. But why am I showing you how to number your pages? Maybe you may say you know how to do that already. But if it is that I should number my pages as is, my pages will start, or the numbers will start on my page from the first page that I have here. And you do not want that. Your cover page should never be numbered. All right? And so you will want your numbering to start on the actual page that you want it to start on. Now, I have my cover page. I have my table of content followed by my title page. And following that are all my 10 pieces all right, of documents for this portfolio. Now, I would like my numbering to start on my title page, all right, but the title page normally carries a Roman numeral. And then the other pages for the portfolio pieces, starting from my two-page letter, should start at number one. So how do we go about doing that? Let me show you. So first thing, you have to scroll down to the page where you want your page numbering to start. And for me, that's my title page. So I'm going to click on this page so that the cursor will be here. Now, once I click on the page, I will then go to insert. When I go to insert, I will go on page number. But I'm going to select the down arrow beside page number. And I'm not going to go directly on my page numbers as yet. I'm going to go down to something known as format page numbers. I'm going to select that. Now it says number format. Now I told you before that my page number for my title page, I wanted to start at Roman numeral one. Now if I should have gone ahead and just inserted a page number, that would have started at number one. And that's not what I want. So as it relates to number format, I'm going to select the down arrow here and select the format that I want my numbering to be in. There are many formats to choose from, all right? I'm going to select Roman numeral one, all right? You have the choice as to which one you want to use, all right? I selected the one that I want. Next, you go down to start at, and I'm going to select that, start at, and I'm going to, the number one came up. So I'm going to allow it to stay on that and press OK. So that's where my numbering will start. Now, what do I do? Did it come on my page? No, it did not. So the next thing I need to do is to ensure that I go back to page number. Once there, I need to decide where on the page do I want my numbering to be placed. Do I want it at the top or at the bottom of the page? All right. And if I want it at the bottom of the page, where at the bottom do I want it? Do I want it to the left, to the center or to the right? I would say it's best to put it at the bottom right of the document. Why? Because some of our documents are folded, right? For example, I'm thinking about an invitation with a menu, right? And to place a number in the center of that page, when you fold a document, you will not see the numbering, all right? And so the bottom right of the page would be best. All right, now here it is, to the bottom right of my page. All right, so let us go up to see what is happening there. All right, so I went back at the beginning of the document. I see um, my cover page is numbered with one. My table of content also has number two, and my title page starts at the Roman numeral one. Now, why is that? That is simply because the pages are linked. All right, here I have linked to previous being highlighted, so I have to deselect that. All right, I do not want this page to be linked to the previous page. So I click that and it's now off. So I'll just go back up and simply delete what is there. All right, so it's now off the cover page and the table of content, but it is still on the title page. All right, so now I can start numbering the rest of my documents. So I'll go down on my two-page letter and I will... Go back, so I, I'm on this page, let me click that, and I will deselect link to previous, all right? And I will now go back to insert, 
and go to page number. I'm going to go down now to format page number, remember? All right, and then I'm going to ensure number format is on what I want, one, two, three, and I'm going to select start at number one and press OK. All right, now remember that will not come on immediately. You will have to activate it now. So I'm going to go back to page number, bottom of page, and select the bottom right. Now there it is. All right. Let me go down. So that's my two page block style letter, page one, page two for the second page, three. So you see that everything is on the page number four, five, six, seven. And we get the gist. All right. So that is it. So the page number is now on all my pages. So I'm going to close out of my header. All right, let me look at my title page. If it still has a Roman numeral one, yes, it does. And go back up. My table of content does not have any number. And my cover page does not have any number. So that is done. Now, the next thing I need to do is to just quickly drop in these numbers in my table of contents. All right, it's table of contents. All right, so, all right, so I'm just going to tap over. I think at 0 0.5 and insert the numbers. All right, so my two-page letter, two pages, and it started at number one. My circular letter will therefore start at number three. That was one page. So my report, my report, I'm just going based on my memory here. My report started on page four, and that's two pages. So that would be five and six, four and five. So this one will be six. Go to set agenda. Will be seven. Chairman's agenda, eight. Right, so the invitation would have taken up two pages. The will with the endorsement would have taken up two pages. Contract on two pages. And my bibliography would be 16. All right? And that is it. Let me quickly zoom down to my bibliography to see if it is actually on 16. All right, 16 bibliography. Good. Now, this is my bibliography. All right? I'm seeing here. Let me delete this from my header. All right. Now, I'm seeing here for my bibliography. It went back up. For my bibliography, I'm just going to say it to you now. So, this is my bibliography here. But for some of you, maybe you did not get a chance to use these books. Some of your documents, you may have gotten them from CXC past paper questions. All right. And so, I will say to you that it is okay. I am saying, I'm just saying that now. It is okay to put CXC past papers, all right? Some person will number this, but it's okay to add to your bibliography CXC past papers because indeed some of the documents that you may have typed for this portfolio did come from a CXC past paper, all right? And we can't penalize you for saying that, all right? So I'm just adding that there. Right, let me quickly go back up and say something else before I end this video. All right, so another thing now is one mark to have your table of content in your portfolio. So to have this page here in your portfolio with the pages numbered accordingly to match it is one mark. But you must also ensure that the information that is here as the heading for the document is the same heading that you actually have on the document. And we look out for that. So I'm saying here, two page block style letter with inset. Let me go down to that document. And I'm seeing two page block style letter with inset. So that is correct. The other one says, circular letter with tear off slip. And, this, and the other one says report. I'm going to go back to my table of content and you need to ensure that it is. It is correct. So circular letter with tear off slip report. 
then we'll tabulate you with vertical heading. You need to ensure that that is there. All right. And I'm going through to ensure that you correct all of these things because you get a mark for it. All right. So this one says wool tabulation with vertical heading, which is correct. The next one says notice and agenda. Let me go back up. Notice and agenda. All right. And here I have wool tabulation with vertical heading. But look here now. Notice of a meeting with an agenda for the meeting. That is totally different. And bear in mind that you get a mark for description of documents. All right? So you need to ensure that you are describing correctly. So remember what I had there, notice and agenda. So if I had wanted the longer one on the document, all right? Just make sure that they coincide. They speak the same language. Okay? And you follow through for all the other documents, ensuring that whatever name is here is the same name that is on the actual document. All right? And that should be it. All right? And that should be it. So please, I'm going to ask you to now do this aspect for your portfolio. And the next thing that we look at is how we compile everything into a folder to send to your teacher, for the teacher to modify it to send it up to CXC. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. And see you in my next upload. Bye-bye.